This episode of The Pageant Project is brought to you by the Neutralis Natural Skin Care Range. Neutralis's effective, cruelty-free formulas are proven to keep your skin looking healthy and feeling good and are packed with pure and organic ingredients. Neutralis is also 100% Australian made and owned. Use the code PAGEANTPROJECT18 to get $10 off when you shop with Neutralis online at www.neutralis.com.au forward slash shop. I'm Miss Australia Continent's Jasmine Farlow, and this is my interview for The Pageant Project. It's Adrian from The Pageant Project, and I am here with Ms. Australia Continents 2018, Jasmine Fowler. Jazz, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. I'm a little bit excited. You're a little bit excited because you see me screwing up already. And just to clarify, this is Ms. I'm not telling Jazz, I'm telling our viewers. This is Ms. M-S, not Miss M-I-S-S. Um, I guess I was just reflecting, Jazz, that I interviewed your Mrs. on Wednesday. Your teen yesterday, I'm interviewing you today, and then I'm interviewing your miss, Gemma, tomorrow. So I've got the, the quad factor. I said, how, how has it been having a team? Because you guys are all about to head to Vegas soon. How important has a team aspect been for you? It's actually a really important aspect. Um, having the girls there constantly behind you supporting and simply commenting on your images or, I mean, we are spread far and wide. Um, Brittany's in Sydney, I'm in Newcastle and both Gemma and Jess are up in Queensland. So we don't get to spend a lot of time face to face together. Um, but having that, that support behind the scenes and online has been very, very important and a very big aspect of all of our journeys, I believe. I can't imagine because, as I said, the four of you are about to head over to Vegas. And your division, unfortunately, at the moment, isn't represented internationally, but you're still going over to support the other girls. So, obviously, the team, the team spirit for you is a huge thing. It definitely is. For me, this journey has mostly been about supporting the other girls. I mean, obviously, there's platforms that I can push for for myself. But as you mentioned, I don't get to compete overseas. So me going over there is simply to, to show unity, to cheer them on. I have been over there before, so I believe I can offer them help behind the scenes and assistance. And obviously, when they're on stage, I um, will be live streaming for, for everyone who's following their journeys and also holding up some massive signs that say Team Australia just to get the big smiles on their faces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and let's just, because you have two lovely sashes right, right in front of us here. <laughs> now, as I mentioned to you before we started recording, there are a lot of different facets that we can go into with you. I guess before we go into the sashes, can you, when someone asks you, what do you do? This is, this is a, $5 million dollar question. How do you answer that question? What don't I do? <laughs> well, how do you answer? Because I mean, I've interviewed a lot of multi-talented slash multi-passionate people. Uh, how do you introduce yourself? Well, if people ask me, what do I do? I literally reply to them, what don't I do? I, I don't have a lot of spare time. I um, tell them that I I'm a pageant queen. I'm a pageant coach. I compete. I have done full-time modeling. I currently am in um, decorating consultant. So I help people decorate their homes and find perfect pieces for their houses. Um, I have my own business as well. So I design pageant uh, costumes and swimwear and I sell jewelry. Um, and believe it or not, I'm going into selling clothing as well. Uh, so that's going to be my actual I guess, the road that I'm trying to take. Well, I can see how there's absolutely no free time there, but I guess, what do you do to recharge? Because otherwise, if you just, I mean, you could enjoy your work so much, maybe you don't need to recharge, but I found that no matter how much you love your work, you do need some, some downtime. So what do you do to recharge? Honestly, my recharging is, there's a brand that's quite, um, I guess they're new and they're very located to where I am, which is in Newcastle and they're called Zabel Designs, but they create these amazing bath bombs and candles and I'm absolutely obsessed with them. 
Um, they're all natural products. But <laughs> so I go and get one of their bath bombs and light a candle and I'll sit in the bath and read. <laughs> and just get away from everything. Yeah, just get away from everything for about an hour. And that's how I can kind of recharge and no phone, no anything, just a book and a candle and I'm happy. <laughs> Yeah, I guess on that, how how often do you switch off? Because, I mean, pageant competitors as a whole are very attached to their phone and social media, and then you have everything else you're doing. Do you find that you need to actually keep your phone away from you just to have some peace of mind, or are you the sort of person who has the phone with them the whole time and is responsive immediately? I usually do have my phone with me the whole time, but I try to find with myself, especially lately, um, with how the world is, we are constantly attached to our phones. So we tend to miss what's happening here and now. So especially within the past year, um, if I'm with somebody, I'll keep my phone in my bag or I'll put my phone away and I'll try and spend that moment with that person. You can always reply to a text message later. And I believe that if someone really truly needs you, they will give you a phone call. So at the end of the day, I, I try to live in the moment. Yeah. It's very rarely life or death. Uh, Let's talk about the continents system. Now, I know that you've competed in at least Galaxy. I was looking at some old interviews you did, or well, old being two years ago, um, although two years can seem an eternity in the pageant space. What is it that drew you to the continent system, particularly as we can see there are two sashes, and you won the Miss title, which you can see on our right, and the Miss, which is which you hold currently. So obviously you must love this system if you've competed twice and won twice and you want to compete again to get the misses. So what is the obsession that you have with the continent system? <laughs> the system itself is just really friendly. I entered this system when I personally was at a low point. I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself. And for me entering, it wasn't about um, getting to the finals or winning the crown. It was simply about getting back on stage and pushing myself because I knew I could do it but I had to get past that fear. So I guess it's that old saying, when you fall off the bike, just get back onto it. Um, so for me, doing continents was more about regaining what I knew that I had within myself. And it honestly helped me do that. When I entered and I ended up winning the Miss section and I went overseas, the goal for me wasn't to bring back the international title. It was to make memories and to get on that stage. And I remember walking off the stage, I placed top 10 at the international and I walked off the stage and it was like a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders. And I just turned to one of um, the director's friends who was backstage and I just looked at her and I'm just like, it's done. And I remember her saying, Oh, don't be like that. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, it's done. Like I did it. I'm really proud of myself. I'm not, I'm, I'm not depressed. I'm not sad that it's over. I'm just really ecstatic that I was able to get back up there and prove to myself what I already knew I could do. Mm. And I mean, that, that's hugely powerful. So when you finished, it sounds like, well, not that you finished, but was it relief? Is that the right word? Or pride? I mean, you mentioned pride as well. Yeah, I think it was more pride. I think it was the fact that, as I mentioned before that, I was in a little bit of a, uh, a, a slump. Um, I didn't have the confidence in myself to set foot on stage or I second guessed everything I was doing and even the way that I dressed or the way that I was. And for me to be able to have pushed myself, even though I was so nervous and I was so scared and I was still second guessing myself every step of that journey and to be able to walk away doing all of that, going off stage, knowing I gave it my all. I think that was honestly the best I've ever been at competing and knowing that, I, I did it. It was just, yeah, it was pride. It was relief. It was gratitude, I think. So building off that, I guess, what have you gained from competing in pageants, particularly your two titles behind you? How would you say it's changed you, improved you as a person? I believe at the beginning, competing in pageants for me was about gaining confidence. Uh, when I was in school, I was very shy. I could not get up in front of a class and do a, a speech. I would have heart palpitations and I just, I couldn't talk in front of people. <laughs> I just, oh, you should have seen me. It was awful. Um, this is something then, just to interrupt. This is something that you continent girls also seem to have in common. Gemma would do her, her speeches in lunch break because she wouldn't want to get up in front of class because she was horrifically bullied. And Brittany said her, her favorite achievement 
last year, which won her title, was winning best in interview. So <laughs> it's, it's a recurring theme that interview and confidence is really, really important. It really is important. And I don't think a lot of people realize that interview is and confidence are two skills, life skills that you gain from pageantry. It's something you can actually take away and use in real life. So if you're going for a job or um, you are interviewing someone for a job, you can actually use those skills and you don't have to be afraid about it being a set up situation. You just, you, you've got to be yourself. You've got to know what you're going in for and you've just got to get through it and you've got to do it. Um, so like I mentioned, for me, it was about gaining that confidence to begin with and then it escalated from there. So I did gain the confidence and I went through so much and I did compete a lot and I did a lot of different, um, I started out, believe it or not, in bikini competitions um, and that's where my stage skills developed from and then I entered pageants and that's where my interview skills developed from because they are two very different worlds and then I lost it all in one devastating swoop so I had to rebuild that all back up and believe it or not the continent system just that one system and that one time competing allowed me to rebuild all of that so how do you rebuild confidence and how do you maintain it uh, I've always lived by the motto you fake it till you make it <laughs> um, <laughs> so honestly I just for me to re it's going to be different for everyone, but for me, I just continue to push myself. We all have a comfort zone and we all have a bubble and yes, it's great to stay in that bubble to focus on what you need to focus on, but sometimes you need to push the boundaries and you just need to get yourself out there. We all have at least one immense fear and I mean, I have a few and there's one that I will never, ever try and overcome because I'm not crazy, but um, <laughs> okay. it's, spiders. it's spiders, by the way. <laughs> um, That's not a fear that you probably need to overcome. No, not really. I don't need to overcome that, but I, I won't even try with that one. Um, but for everything else, for, you know, like I said, the interviews and the social skills and speaking out, I just kept pushing myself. I believe that as a person, we are always constantly changing. We are constantly growing and there's always something that we can learn. We're never done learning, not, not at any moment in our life. So I believe we should just get out there and keep at it and keep pushing ourselves. You, you're striking me with the answers that you're giving me as someone who's given life a lot of thought. I'm just curious as to maybe, are there any particular qualities in you that you are particularly proud of, ones that you've fostered, ones that you've had to grow? Um, particular qualities. I guess loyalty and honesty. A lot of people do get a little bit offended by my honesty. I'll always be honest with people um, and they don't always like the answers, but at the end of the day, I know that I've told them the truth and a lot of the time they do come back and they're like, you're the only one who was honest with me. I'm like, well, that's what you get. <laughs> I think that's an important quality to keep in, the, in, in any area, let alone the pageant area. Uh, keeping on the pageant theme, Jasmine, also you have your own pageant system. You're the director of your own pageant system as well. Is that correct? That's correct. I'm the Australian director for a system called Miss Australia Global. Okay. So aside from competing, you're also on the director side. So can you tell us, I guess, to start what, you know, with your abundance of free time, obviously, what made you decide to go into the other side of pageantry, the director side? For me at the moment, to be honest with you, I've done a lot in pageantry. I've been competing on the stage for over a decade now. Um, and I have grown a lot from it. I've, um, been lucky enough to win a, a lot from it. So a lot of titles and be able to give to other people as well. So at the stage that I'm at now, which as you mentioned is the Ms. section, a lot of the time the Ms. section isn't internationally recognized and it is something that's quite new to pageantry and Australian pageantry in general is not a huge scene. Um, so for me, I believe that directing a pageant was my next step to be able to not only continue in, I guess, the pageant community for myself, but to give girls another opportunity to get out there and follow their dreams and create the futures that they want to create. And was this year the first year that you ran the, the pageant? It was, yes. This was the first year that I ran the Miss Australia Global. Uh, I was 
extremely nervous um, and also very excited about how it all went. And at the end of the day, when it did finish, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm super, super proud of how it all ran, how all of the girls uh, held themselves together. And I've had nothing but excellent and exciting feedback. Right. And I guess, um, how was it being on the other side? Did you learn anything more or appreciate any aspect of pageantry more being on the director side versus being on the competitor side? Do you feel more compassion for your directors in the future? <laughs> Definitely. <Okay. laughs> there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that you just don't realize. And there's a lot of hours. So I think for contestants, what they need to realize is every time that they're messaging the director or calling the director with a question, so is every other contestant. So what one conversation can be an hour with one contestant. If you have, you know, 40 contestants, then you've got 40 hours worth of phone calls and then that happens every single week. So on top of that, you've got your questions that they message you and on top of that, you've got all your organisation that you need to do. So I have a newfound respect for all of the directors out there who quite frankly do an incredible job. <laughs> A newfound, newfound respect and newfound patience, I think. What, what are your goals? Because obviously you're, you're goal-driven, you're a driven person. What are your goals with the uh, Miss Australia Global International Pageant? I would love to build it uh, into a system that is definitely well-recognised within Australia. Um, I'm excited to actually have the opportunity to do this as well and to have the international directors approach me to ask me to run their system. That alone was an extremely big honour um, my goal, though, is focused on the girls who enter. So I want them to have a safe, happy and also honest environment that they can compete in, knowing that it doesn't matter what they do or what happens, because at the end of the day, there's only going to be one girl that walks away with a crown, but that they've been able, like I said, to push themselves and to create their own goals. And it doesn't matter which contestant it is, I'm going to be there every step of the way to help them achieve that. So the first thing I say, or the first thing I did say this year to all of the contestants was sit down and think about what you want out of this pageant, not a crown, not a sash, but something else, because that's your goal. Yeah. And you just crowned, it was about a month ago, wasn't it? That yes. The pageant was held, I can't remember. And you crowned your, your first winner. So can you tell us who your winner was and what the immediate goals for your title holder are? Of course, um, your Miss Australia Global International 2018-19 <laughs> is Chelsea Ann Lewis. Um, she is actually a Central Coast girl, so luckily she's not too far from me, which means we can um, talk a lot and meet up a lot and work on her goals. So at this point, I believe her personal aspects are simply to get out there and do the best possible job that she can do building her own platform and also helping out with the Australian pageant systems. And there's an international competition, isn't there? There is. It will be held in Jamaica in 2019. Uh, so Chelsea will be flying over there to compete as Miss Australia. Uh, we don't have a lot or we can't release a lot uh, of other details about that just yet, but it won't be too far before they're posted online. For some reason, these international competitions are always held in really horrible places that you'd never want to go, right? I mean, No, you definitely wouldn't want to go to that tropical wonderland. <laughs> it sounds like hard work, but someone's got to do it. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, I guess for yourself, a pertinent question is, can you, can you predict the future in terms of where you want to be? I mean, do you know where you're going to be in a year's time, five years' time, ten years' time? If you'd asked me that a year ago, I could have given you a straight answer. But um, at this stage, unfortunately, I don't know where I'm going to be. Um, I know that whatever I do, I will want to continue to grow as a person. Um, I don't know where that's going to take me or how, um, I guess, my pageant journeys or my pageant uh, aspects is going to change that. Um, but I know that it will and I know that. I'll be grateful for it. Sure. Uh, and just before, I'll, I'll grab your social media details so that people can follow your journey. But before we do that, uh, I wanted to ask you, I guess, two more general questions, not necessarily related to pageants, um, and they've just crossed my mind now. But 
let me ask you this. What, what do you think maybe over the past five or 10 years has been the hardest lesson that you've had to learn or the biggest obstacle that you've had to overcome? The, honestly, the hardest lesson that I've had to learn is to retrust people. Um, I unfortunately, well, it's not really unfortunate, but I'm a very trusting person and I'm a very, I guess, a, you know, black and white person. For me, if someone says the sky's blue, I'm going to believe them. Um, but what I think a lot of people need to realise is that in this day and age, yes, there's always going to be a small sense of community, but everyone does have to look out for themselves and their families first. So for me, something that was very hard to overcome was getting to retrust people after knowing that you can't always put your faith in others and you've got to put your faith in yourself first. Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's a very difficult issue and it's one that's always, you know, adjusting because I think if you trust absolutely everyone, you get hurt and people will take advantage of you. And if you don't trust anyone, then what's the point of life? So, exactly. Yeah. That, that was one of my, yeah. One of my hurdles that I had to overcome was learning to retrust uh, people who weren't immediate family. Yeah. It's, it's a point well taken and I definitely know where you're coming from. What about, uh, I'm going to, I want to ask you who your biggest inspirations are, not, not necessarily just in the pageant world though because you obviously are a multifaceted person yourself. So who are your biggest inspirations or role models and why? I know that everybody says this and it's so cliche. My biggest inspiration is my mother, <laughs> but it's, it's very true. Um, my mother has always been a single parent. She has, when she could, she worked her little butt off to give us what she could give us. Uh, she went without sometimes to give us what we needed um, and she always, always tried. And I think that when it boils down to it, uh, we always, my brother and I always had a loving home with her to come home to and she never judged us. She constantly supported us and it didn't matter what we did, she would be behind us 100% of the way. Um, growing up, my mother unfortunately fell ill. She got diagnosed with epilepsy. So that was a big turn in our lives. Um, she went a little bit off the beaten track. She had to take a lot of medication. She became quite weak and couldn't do the things that she had to do before. Um, but she was always still there and she was always proving to us that she was still a brick, um, even though she may not have felt like it at the time. So she's definitely my inspiration and she's definitely someone that I look up to. And if I can be, when I become a parent, if I can be half the person, hmm that she is, I'll be, I'll be bloody brilliant. <laughs> that's, that's touching. I mean, a lot of people do say that their mother is the, their inspiration, but not, not in so many words as, as to what you've described. She sounds amazing. Uh, Jazz, if there's someone watching this, let's say a young girl and they want to compete in pageants or they just have their dreams and they maybe don't have the confidence quite to go for them yet, what advice or words of inspiration would you have for a young girl watching and uh, watching your interview and from the lessons that you've learned? I would tell them to go for it. I would tell them to focus on what they feel that they want on their goals. Don't listen to anyone else. Don't listen to the negativity out there. Unfortunately, some people who you think are friends won't be supportive of you, but if it's what you truly want to do, give it 100% and you can achieve your dreams. At the end of the day, as I mentioned before, Things in life change, you know, people come and go, jobs come and go, uh, but you're going to be your one true constant and you're going to be there your whole entire journey. So do what you need to do for yourself to achieve your dreams. Yeah, well spoken. I think a final question, I guess, who do you think you would have been without pageants? Oh, gee. You said that you've been in pageantry for a decade, which I don't know anyone who's been in pageantry for a decade. But if you took the pageants out of your life, who do you think I would be speaking to right now? I honestly don't know. I have thought many times that I may stop competing, um, but I just don't know what I'd do without them. Um, they've become such a solid block in my life and such a huge chunk of my life, even to the point where 
I do coach girls and I do help um, other girls in their journeys. And I run not only the Miss Australia Global International, but also a charity pageant once a year. Um, and I compete myself. So I honestly don't know who you would be talking to. Probably a uptight designer who would live in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's some aspects of that that are not bad, but I, I, I understand. Okay. Uh, Jasmine, for people who want to follow your journey with everything that you're doing, what, what are the best social media ways? And whatever you say, I'll title it below because sometimes they're hard to spell really long. I like to keep my social media very, very simple. So honestly, everything, Facebook, Snapchat, Bigo, Instagram, they're all simply just Jasmine Farlow. Perfect. Okay. That's, that's so much easier. Like Gemma's was like Gemma and then with five A's and like, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Jess, let's finish off with uh, 10 questions. This is probably the pageant esque side of it. So number one, what is your favorite word? Oh, actually, I think I say actually a lot. Oh, I thought you were going to say actually my favorite word is, and no, your favorite word is actually. Actually, I think you can um, intrigue a lot of people with that word. <laughs> I think that's a very clever word. I think that gives you time to think. Definitely. <laughs> actually. Anyway, I'll have to remember that one. That's definitely a new one. Okay, question, question to the second. What is your least favorite word? Oh, I can't say that one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Now I'm just going to think for the rest of the interview what that, what that <laughs> word was. Okay. In life, what, what excites you? What turns you on? In life, uh, honestly, if I wake up and the day is sunny and I don't have, I know this sounds awful, but I don't have to go to work and spend the whole day inside, I'm thrilled that that excites me because anything can happen. Right. Okay. But what turns you off? Oh, sad people. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I mean, we all go through sad phases, but you mean people who are chronically sad and not doing anything about it? No, I mean, if somebody's sad, then um, that also, like, I won't stop until I make them happy. So it, right. it affects me. I just try and, yeah, try, try to put a smile on their face. Right. Okay. Do you, are you good at cracking jokes? Is that how you put a smile on people's faces? I'm good at being a clown. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right what sound or noise do you love actually actually see i said it again um <laughs> I, think, I told you it's a clever word the ocean water i absolutely love that sound anything to do with water yeah and what sound or noise do you hate I cannot stand that noise that people make before they, um, like when they're going to cough or when they're going to spit, that, that throat noise. I just, oh, it vibrates through clearing, me. Clearing their throat and all that. Yes, I can't. Up. Yeah. Can't do that. <laughs> I, got, I got that one. Okay. Now, I know you've answered this in written format, but what, if you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? I have always wanted to read people's minds. Um, not only would it help when you're on stage and you're in front of the judges and you know what they're thinking, <laughs> but I think that it's always a great ability to be able to read people's minds so that you do know whether or not they're okay and how they're feeling and how they're thinking and how the situation around you is because evaluating your life situation is something that's very important daily. Mm. Okay. What job or occupation other than your own? would you most like to attempt? Victoria's Secret model. <laughs> um, I would love to do that, but unfortunately I'm not tall enough. I'm nowhere near that height, but that would be, I believe, most um, pageant girls or most models dream goal. <laughs> well, you gave exactly the same answer as Brittany. Brittany wants to be a, a VS model as well. Exactly. What about what occupation other than your own would you definitely not like to attempt? I would never, ever want to be a hairdresser or a nurse. Um, it's strange that I've actually really thought about this, but nurses, I 100% I admire what they do, but I don't think that I could do that. Um, and a hairdresser, I cannot stand loose hair um, or even extensions. They send shivers through my spine, so I could never do that job either. <laughs> 
<laughs> I will say your your missus, uh, Jess, said, um, I don't know, can you guess what your missus said? <laughs> I'm going to get you to guess what your missus said and your miss said, Gemma and Jess. Well, no, I have no idea because Jess does do hairdressing, so she's <laughs> really good at that. <laughs> Jess said she didn't want to be the driver of a poo truck. Okay. That's an interesting end. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. my response to it. <laughs> I didn't know that was a job and I can see why you wouldn't want it. And Gemma said she didn't want to be a toilet cleaner. See, they've thought about this a lot more than me. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about that. If your answer to anything is a poo truck driver, I'm not sure how much thought you've given. <laughs> Anyway, final question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, margaritas are over there. Go join your friends. <laughs> yeah. That's similar to probably the best answer I think I've ever had to that question was someone just said GNT, as in gin and tonic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, the pearly gates, here you go. You made it. So... Jasmine, as I mentioned, I'll keep you on the line just after this, but thank you so much for your time. No, thank you for having me. It's actually been a lot of fun. You sound surprised. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I always get, like I said, anything to do with public speaking, I always get a little bit nervous, but um, just push through. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone could have told you were nervous. So best of luck with everything. And when I say everything, I mean, I'm looking at the sashes, so, you know, everything. Everything. <laughs> everything and everything else that I'm sure that you'll take on in your abundance of spare time. And I want to thank everyone else for watching and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Hey, it's Adrian. If you'd like some pageant coaching to help you win that title or you'd like to keep up to date with our interviews, check us out at thepageantproject.com. Speak to you soon.